afternoon. Um, my name is uh, Gail Mick. I am the physician pediatric endocrinologist on the endocrine team for newborn screening. Um, it's a pleasure being here today. Um, my uh, colleague in this whole business is a fabulous nurse practitioner, Leslie Pitts. Do you stand up, Leslie? Many of you will talk to her, and just as Dr. Let, Let, uh, Rutledge mentioned, we work as a team in the newborn screening field, and we um, learn from each other. I couldn't do it without her. Anyhow, today um, we're talking about two of the endocrine disorders that we screen for. The first one, congenital adrenal hyperplasia. We didn't speak today about this disorder, so I'm going to give you maybe a one-minute <laughs> background. This is a disorder in adrenal gland function um, and it involves a pathway um, that has an enzyme that's missing. There are, can be variants of it, but the primary one that we screen for is called 21-hydroxylase deficiency. And this leads to problems in actually three of the pathways in the adrenal gland so that you don't make enough cortisol, which is a life-sustaining hormone. You need it right now. You need it to fight stress. You need it to keep your blood pressure up. Vital hormone for sustenance. Without that, you can have an acute cardiac arrest. It also involves the pathway for mineral corticoid function. It's the same enzyme in both pathways. And if you lack that hormone, you can have an acute salt-wasting crisis. So it's life-threatening. What happens with this enzyme deficiency is those two pathways are blocked and parents ha pa patients have variable deficiencies in mineral corticoid and glucocorticoid that if not detected early, infants can die even pr um, prior to detection in a salt wasting crisis. As a consequence of the block in these two pathways, the third one gets, gets directed and overfills and so you get overproduction of androgens and in, in girls, this can lead to profound virilization of their genitalia, which is a whole nother difficulty that we deal with. So we want to screen. This was the second disorder that was screened for. I feel like it's kind of a pair to uh, hyperphy in that it's a, one of the first that was described. In, um, well, that was congenital hypothyroidism, but congenital adrenal hyperplasia shortly thereafter, one of the first ones described and treated. So. Um, the uh, first patient, we're going to have a patient from um, both of the endocrine disorders that we screen for. The first patient I'd like to introduce is the uh, Garrett family, Isaiah Garrett, who is now two years old. And his mom has come. She is a mother of five children, an extraordinary mother. And it's her fifth child, Isaiah, who was diagnosed. So get that statistics, because <laughs> it's more likely. So anyhow, I'd like her to come up. He presented. Um, very differently, his first newborn screen was entirely normal, and then his second screen at two weeks of age was abnormal, but it wasn't until a third done at about six weeks that she was called in, and sure enough, he has one of the simple virilizing causes of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. He is steroid dependent, and uh, he's done very well. He's a wonderful young boy, and we look forward to years of taking care of him. As she said, my name is Stephanie Garrett. My husband, Matthew, and I have been married for 15 years, and we have five children. Levi is 14, Abigail is 11, Olivia is 9, Ava is 4, and Isaiah is 2. So we call them the bigs and the littles because we have that five-year gap between them. Um, we had no idea whatsoever what congenital adrenal hyperplasia was. Uh, when we brought Isaiah home from the hospital, we thought this was routine. We've done this four other times. Just like every other child, we thought we were good to go. So his PKU or his newborn screening in the um, hospital was normal. No indication anything was wrong. I've done this four other times. I didn't think anything was wrong. He seemed completely like the other four kids. So um, we went in for our two-week checkup. Again, everything was normal. And 
A week before our two-month checkup, I received a phone call from the pediatrician saying that we needed to come in to uh, the doctor's office that same day because they had just received the results and one of his labs was abnormal. It's probably just a fluke, don't worry about it, but come on in today. So, uh, of course, we didn't even know at that point which screen was abnormal. Um, they tested it and we found out a week later that his third screen was even higher. I received a phone call uh, from my pediatrician himself explaining he's the pediatrician for the four other kids and so we have quite the relationship and he said, Stephanie, uh, you, you need to go to Children's and uh, you can go tomorrow or you can go in a week and I said we'll be there in the morning. Um, so that began our relationship with Leslie and Dr. Mick and the support that we have felt from these two ladies is unreal. They spent the amount of time that a mom needed to reassure her that we can live life because that was the fear. Oh my gosh, are we going to be able to live life? I told them in the room, we can't live in a bubble. We have four other kids and there's going to be sicknesses and illnesses and I want my child to go to school and I want my child to be normal. And they reassured me at that time, yes, you're going to be fine. You can do this. Um, they answered all my questions. They reassured me that Isaiah could be okay and he could live out his dreams and our dreams for him just like our four other children. Um, I think we spent about an hour and a half just with Leslie, with <laughs> her explaining all the different parts because there, what Dr. Mick just said, there were a lot of big words in there for a parent who doesn't understand what she just said, they were able to explain it to me in a way that I could understand it, under, uh, to explain the treatment, how we needed to be hyper vigilant, but not helicopter parents who didn't let our child experience life at the same time. And so it's been this balance of how do we pay attention and are hyper vigilant, but yet at the same time, allow our child to experience life. So we have uh, an amazing support system that has been built around us. If you see the, the little picture on the left hand side up there, uh, that was the day that we went to Children's and we had our full day long of testing. So we spent a lot of time with education and then uh, a part of the identification, uh, if what kind of CAH and how severe it was, um, was he had to receive blood work, then received a shot uh, to stimulate to uh, what it would be like if he was in adrenal crisis, and then and exactly an hour later he had to uh, have blood drawn again. For a mom, that was a horrible experience of having to put your child through that blood work. He's only two months old and the first um, lab tech that tried to draw his blood, it was an hour of trying to draw blood from my little two month old guy's hand. Um, he has lots of sticks, if you can see. He's got some in his arms, some in his legs, some in his hands. And so that was very traumatizing to all of us uh, during that time. But we kept coming back to, to Leslie and Dr. Mick, and they kept reassuring us, it's okay, we're, we're going to help you through this process. And uh, when we had some pretty tough blood draws, uh, throughout the the first year of life, they did everything to make sure that we found good individuals who were very good at doing blood draws for Isaiah because that can be very traumatizing. We have to do blood draws uh, depending on the time, six to eight weeks to make sure that his levels are where he needs to be. He receives uh, hydrocortisone three times a day. 
Uh, part of our support is uh, our entire family knows how to give the medicine right now. It's in compound formed. Have a great relationship with our uh, compounding pharmacist, and he actually spent time showing me how to give Isaiah a shot if he did go into adrenal crisis. That's that's the risk that we run: is if he breaks an arm, if he has any kind of physical crisis he could go into adrenal crisis and die. And so knowing how to use the shot uh, could be life-saving for him. Um, there's all kinds of different, um, I don't know the word, the, um, emergency crews that are not equipped and don't know anything about CAH, and that's very alarming. Uh, to, to myself as a parent because if Isaiah goes into adrenal crisis, I call the ambulance, they, the, uh, the paramedics cannot give Isaiah the shot of Soyokortov. It's against state law. They, it's my equipment, my stuff, and so I, as a parent, have to know how to give the shot that's going to save my child. Uh, so it was very important for me to know and educate all of those around me that know Isaiah uh, exactly how to give the shot, how to make sure that they're giving the medicine in, in the time frame that they need to give the medicine. Um, we have to educate uh, people in the church nursery of, uh, no, we don't want to hover, but at the same time, if he seriously injures himself, then, then we need to know about it so we can address that immediately. I've had one uh, experience with the ER, and that was after three weeks of RSV, with us going to the pediatrician's office almost daily to make sure that he um, got well. Uh, he then got a stomach virus, and his little body just couldn't keep his medicine down, which can be very serious for him. So we did have to administer the Soyokortov uh, shot and bring him to Children's so that he could receive IVs and, and make sure that his levels were okay and he wasn't in adrenal crisis. Um, that was a tough day. Uh, the first time that you give a shot to your child and you're wondering, are, are we going to be okay? Um, but again, that support was invaluable to our family. Now we are in the rhythm. Uh, we give medicine three times a day. We don't even think about it. Isaiah at two, uh, he will say medicine, and he tries to um, put the medicine in his mouth himself. He likes the little Doc McStuffins medicine uh, dropper and tries to give everybody medicine because that's what you do, right? You, everybody gets medicine three times a day. That's life. We are so happy that he is a part of our family and he has rocked our world from day one and he will continue to rock our world, I am sure, but I'm thankful to be his mama and be able to have my world rocked by him. Thank you.